Nee. Nee. En we hadden hun mond. Liep je bij dat spier. Hi everyone, and welcome to another video. We have left Port Acosta behind us just now. So that means we are heading for the Outback. Port Acosta is kind of the gateway to the Outback. Just now over into the Stewart Highway, so now we're officially, really? yeah, just started here. Oh my god, we're on the Stewart Highway! I'm so excited! Our first stop of the day is a place called Lake Park. Yeah, it's uh, a dried out uh, salt lake, so there's not any, actually any water left, it's just all salt. It's a two hour drive, apparently? Yeah, two hours. It is already 1pm, which means we'll be at the salt lakes around 3pm. But after that, it's only like a half hour, 45 minutes until our rest stop for the day. So yeah, that's all right. we're staying at a place called Glendamba. 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 Yeah, which is uh, just a very small. Is it a village or is it just a roadhouse? I think it's just a roadhouse. All right. Just something somewhere to get some gas and some food. <laughs> Most of the itineraries online that you find take you from Port Augusta to Cooper Pedy in one day. But we decided to split that up in two, so we won't be arriving at Cooper Pedy today, but probably tomorrow. Yeah. We have time, so we have like an entire month before we want to be in Darwin. Scenery is already pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, is that Uluru? <laughs> I doubt it. Maybe. That would be quick. Yeah. Oh, wow. Are those Flinder Rangers? No. Uh, the Flinder Rangers are the best. Oh, okay. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> So that's where we were in last video. If you haven't seen the video, a few days ago we checked out the Flinders Ranges. So we made it to the final destination for today, a motel room in Glendam... Glendambo. <laughs> Not Glenoba. <laughs> you keep saying Glenoba and I am, now I'm confused too. Glendambo. But it's Glendambo. Today is our first day going to the Red Center and mm -hmm. we almost did the one number one thing you're not supposed to do when you're driving through the Red Center and that is driving after dark. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we but we spent... left pretty late in uh, Port Augusta. Yeah. We spent a bit longer at the Salt Lake than we planned because yeah. we wanted to take some funny pictures and... But we had so much fun doing it. Yeah, we kind of lost fun. track of time, so... Uh -huh. Look at fun. my pants! Yeah. Because of the salt. Oh well. But it was fun and we made it yeah. without hitting any kangaroos. We almost hit a, a cow. Yeah, like Several a bunch cows. of cows that were just crossing the street and the sun was really low so we had to drive like this uh -huh. for like half an hour. But we won't make that mistake again, we'll be sure to arrive at our next destination yeah. before the sundown. The memory card of our camera was full, so I stopped recording. But we pretty much said everything we wanted to say. We are now in our shitty little motel. <laughs> It'll do for the night. It was also really expensive, but it's the only accommodation here in Glen... Glendoma? Glendambo. Glendambo, oh yeah. So, yeah, we didn't have another choice. But the place does have a very nice restaurant slash bar. We saw a fireplace through the windows and it looks really cozy. So we might check that out later and have a beer. I like that. Good morning, guys. Uh, I just had a nice shower. Although the shower looks disgusting, it works perfectly. The water temperature was perfect. Ah, uh, really nice. So... 
today well this morning steve checked the weather and it turns out it's gonna be 17 degrees and sunny in cooper pd so i thought oh, that's pretty good maybe i can ditch my jeans and wear my shorts or something and it even looks really sunny and warm outside and then i went to the car to get my stuff and it is fucking freezing <laughs> it's it really so cold in the morning as well yeah. so i think it's just like six or seven degrees outside at uh -huh. the moment. It can get up to 40 or 50 degrees uh, here during the summer, but it can also go as low as, I don't know, zero degrees mm -hmm. probably. And that's because there's no, no water around here to keep the temperature more like stable. So it can get really hot by the sun uh, during the day and then at night there's nothing to heat the earth. Mm -hmm. So it gets really cold again. Okay guys, we're on the road again. We just left Glendembo behind us. Glendembo. Nope. At Glenova, and we're headed to Cooper Pedy now, which is almost exactly as long as it was from Port Augusta to Glendembo. It's about two and a half hours drive, 255 kilometers, I think. And there's nothing in between Glendembo and Cooper Pedy, yeah. <laughs> so it's just open road and maybe a few rest areas here and there, but there's nothing like uh, road houses or service areas, yeah, or service stations. So. That you can do. There's nothing. It's just the road. The road. All right, guys, we made it to Cooper Pedy, and we are now standing in front of the famous uh, blower. It's called. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if we told you yet, but uh, Cooper Pedy is uh, like a little mining village. Mm -hmm. It was built because there is a lot of. Anyway, it was built because there is a lot of opal in the ground here and there are a lot of opal mines around and that's why they built the town here in the middle of literally nowhere. Yeah. And they built most of the houses underground okay. and they're called dugouts because it can go get so scorchingly hot yeah. here during the summer. As we told you guys before, it can get up to 50 degrees. during the day in the summer so they were kind of forced to live underground to yeah. hide from the heat and apparently underground the temperature is a nice like 23 to 26 mm -hmm. degrees celsius uh, all year round so even now in winter it's nice and warm down yeah. there and in summer it's nice and cool down yeah. there and we are actually going to stay in Cooper Pedy for a few days and we are going to sleep underground as well. There are a lot of hotels and even underground campsites here to experience the real Cooper Beatty experience. We just checked into our, what do we call this place? Campsite? Yeah. The place we are staying at is Rebus, Rebus Underground Camping and Tourist Park. Park. Apparently the only underground campsite in the world. It's not really appropriate to camp there. <laughs> It's not really good to camp now for us uh, because we only have either the car or a small tent and outside is way too cold but yeah. inside it should be a nice 23 degrees always. We're at the reception, oh there are a lot of flies here and it is not summer so I can imagine in summer it's horrible. Mm -hmm. We just parked our car in front of the campsite and we have to go inside this tunnel. It looks really cool. So we are going to check it out right now. It's a bit scary as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not really sure what to expect once we get inside. Uh -huh. But there's even a TV room mm -hmm. um, next to the reception and there's Wi-Fi and everything. So, oh wow, this is really cool. <laughs> How far do we go? Oh, there's one other tent over there. Oh, okay. I think these are the little holes that we can... <laughs> There are a few other tents here. It's pretty dark here. Was there a light? Mm -hmm. Light switch? Oh, here's a light switch. <laughs> it's not a lot of light. <laughs> oh, I can't see anything. <laughs> this is so cool. Chilly inside. Yeah. I hope it doesn't get colder at night though. Oh wow. This is really cool. I can't see anything. My eyes aren't adjusted yet. I see more through the camera screen than through my eyes. Like <laughs> we just put up our tent. We chose this little area because it had the best lighting. It's very echoey here, yeah. So I think 
We have to be really quiet when we go to bed. Ooh. Ooh. Maybe we can sing a song tonight. All together? Yeah. Oh, it's so bright outside. Yeah, it's, time to, it's time to adjust. I can't see anything. All right, we are going to check out the kitchen. There's like a camp kitchen. And maybe head into Cooper PD. Check it out. We you still have the map? Yeah. Um, it's pretty touristy actually. I read online that Cooper Pitti gets most of his money nowadays from tourism actually. The woman at the reception just gave us a map and she showed us different stores and bakeries and there was a new bakery, yeah. new fish and chips Like shop. underground church and yeah. all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah, there's a bank, there's a post office. It looks kind of in the middle of nowhere but... There are a lot of facilities around. Even if you're not into the outback kind of life and you are more into luxury, there are pretty luxurious hotels in Cooper Pini. And here you have the camp kitchen. It's the little stove over here. Kind of feels like, I don't know, they're like in Iraq or something, like in the desert. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing, like an army base army or something. Base, yeah. yeah. Like with these, uh, protection against the flies and mosquitoes and uh -huh. like a basic barrack setup and stuff <laughs> yeah that's so true and outside everything is so sandy and deserty deserty <laughs> yeah <laughs> these are the toilet facilities and they're really good actually but during 10 a.m and 1 p.m the toilets close and there's this little thing in case of emergency it is called the thunder dummy <laughs> It's a decent toilet. Not too bad. Eh? We have stayed at campsites with only a hole in the ground as a toilet, so this is pretty luxurious. <laughs> we are now driving through the center of Cooper Beatty. There are quite a lot of shops actually, but it is already 3:30 on a Saturday, and in Australia on a Saturday, everything closes very early. So it's cool to just drive around here. Uh huh. So this evening at 7 p.m. the caravan park where we are staying at is giving a tour in their mine. So we are going to do our first mine tour today already. Okay, so even though almost everything is closed in Cooper PD on a Saturday... Oh, come on! <laughs> this there, was no, there were no cars for like... We keep having these, these Truman Show uh, situations. I don't know if you've seen the movie Truman Show, but... Yeah, it's kind of hard to explain maybe, but if you've seen it, you know what we're talking about. Like, yeah. whenever we want to do something, or maybe cross the street, there's like tons of cars, and then two seconds later, or two seconds, two seconds before, there was no one. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we did find this waffle shop that also sells opals and every, other jewelry. Every place sells opals. Yeah, so every little random place that you can go to, like even motels and hotels, I guess, mm -hmm. sells opals as well. We just drink some coffee here. And it's warm, yeah. the sun. Enjoying the sun. So Can you feel it? Can you feel the burn? <laughs> we decided to take a quick look at the underground Catholic church, which is free to visit, so... Oh, here's a light switch. Oh, wow. There's no one here, and I'm not religion, but still, the church has this effect on you. I thought it has an effect on me. I don't know. I know what you mean. If I were to get married in front of the church, I would choose a church like this. <laughs> it's underground. It's very cave-like. <laughs> really cool. Plus, I don't have a lot of friends, so more than enough space. <laughs> Sad thing to say. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, not really. <laughs> We're going to get started with how the uncle got into the ground because that's when the whole thing started, which was around about 120 million years ago, they tell us. This is when Australia first broke away from the Antarctic. But at the time, Australia's ancient shape was a little more like this. She's come up this way, go back down, across, and then back around. So this section of the country was still under the ocean. What happens then is the country started to drift towards the equator. As she drifted, she kept getting hitting land plates at, at the bottom of the sea. So each time she hit one, that would lift the country a little. 
So therefore the ocean, it started to recede a little further back and back until we finished up with that current shape. We are going to head into our cave for the night. <laughs> we are currently in the TV room actually. Yeah. In the TV cave. TV like, dugout. Yeah. There's this one small TV. <laughs> yeah. We are in here mostly for the Wi Fi. Yeah. Which is pretty stable for being uh -huh. in the middle of like the desert. But yeah, it's time to go to bed. It's we already so cold in here. And this dugout has a door and stuff and windows. And ours doesn't. It feels like the time when we spent the night in the, in the car. Back in Melbourne, Melbourne when yeah. it was like 9 degrees outside and we couldn't sleep. Like, it was so cold. <laughs> but yeah, we'll, we'll see. see yeah. We might have to go buy some like rum or something tomorrow. <laughs> what a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to keep warm during yeah. the night. Um, I read online that the dugouts are supposed to be like 23 degrees Celsius yeah. all around the year, but Me this too. is like not close no. to 23 degrees. It's warmer than outside. Yeah, though, I, but yeah I think so too. Not 23, no. no. Alright, so thank you guys for watching this video and we will tell you all about our experience in the dugout in the next video. Yeah. So see you guys then. See ya. Bye. Bye.